Okay, welcome back. Good morning. And uh, today we are going to continue as part of our course on energy conservation and waste heat recovery. We will continue our discussions on thermoelectric generators. Okay, we already have had two lectures on this. So today, what we will do is we are going to go into you know analyzing the performance of a thermoelectric generator. Um, again, thermoelectric generator, as we know, can directly convert thermal energy that is available to us and in the context of this course we are talking about waste heat recovery. So, let us say we have a source of waste heat or we have a source of thermal energy from which otherwise would have been wasted and we can harness part of that energy to and convert it to additional electrical energy all right. So, before we move on I will just want to show uh, or want to mention another just one extra thing. See, this is how uh, we saw that a thermoelectric module consists of a series of these n p pairs or p n pairs thermoelectric pairs uh, and which are connected in series. And then at the top and bottom we have couple of ceramic plates that kind of sandwich them sandwich these materials. Now, the thermoelectric module can be used for generation of electricity which is the focus of what we are discussing and this is how it is done as we saw on one we have a series of this NNP types on one end we have a heated uh, a, a source of heat Q n coming in and so that is at a hotter temperature the other end is at a colder temperature and what we are saying is if we do that we will be able to give rise to an electric current that will flow through a resistor that is outside okay and that is how we are able to get electrical energy out of it. Now, the reverse is also possible let us say we have a thermoelectric module and we force a current to flow through that in the manner that is shown over here. Then what happens is an electric uh, it gives rise to a temperature gradient across the junctions and as a result of which it is possible to remove heat across a, an adverse temperature gradient that is to remove heat or, or transfer heat from a lower temperature to higher temperature okay, which is what is shown here. And uh, where do we see this otherwise? We see this in a refrigerator. In our refrigerators, what we see is we are able to in a refrigerator, whatever the, the way it works is, we are able to constantly remove heat from a lower temperature to a higher temperature. We are removing heat from inside the refrigeration chamber, which is at a lower temperature and rejecting it to the outside ambient, which is at a higher temperature. Thermoelectrics can perform the same function in this manner. Okay. Only in this case, the electrical energy is the input to the thermoelectric module and the temperature difference is output. But in our focus what we are looking at for energy generation the temperature difference is the input is a cause and the electrical energy that we get out of it is the effect. So, I thought it was impo it is important for us to know the very the other prominent application of thermoelectrics which is as a refrigerator or as a cooler where it is being researched and being also used in, in several applications. Okay. Okay, now, let us move on to the thermoelectric generation that is used as an engine which is the left hand cartoon. So, let us look into this if we saw last time and again we will take just a single pair of N and P type and try to analyze this configuration. Okay. So, let us do a little bit of analysis. Analysis for performance. Okay. So, what we will do is we will do an energy balance to start with. So, let us do an energy balance. But before that let us look at the different source terms. The first one we will talk about is joule heat. Okay. So, let me say what is joule heat. So, joule heat is Q j let us write it as Q j and that is going to be I squared times R we know that I squared R heating and again we will write it as I squared and we are what is the R this is the resistance that is offered by the two semiconductors uh, two semiconductors one n type one p type. 
So, R is rho L over A. So, we will write it as rho P L P over A P for the P junction and rho N L N over A N for the N junction clear. So, many a times in future we may denote this whole thing as capital R. Okay. So, I just want to define it right now. Now, it is reasonable to assume. Okay. So, let me make that note here or, or at least state verbally. It is reasonable to assume that this joule heat is dissipated equally at the two junctions at the hot junction and the cold junction. So, reasonable I would say to assume that Q j is dissipated equally at the two junctions ok. So, if that is the case again once again let us look at this we have def defined the outer uh, or the external resistance as R L the current as I the heat that is supplied is Q H and the heat that is rejected the cold junction as Q C. Okay. So, Q H Q C is defined we know and we are looking at if we operate the thermoelectric module what are the additional energy terms that we are going to come across. So, the second one we will call it as the conduction heat or Q cont or Q C Q cont sorry Q C is already Q cold. Um, so, why where does this have why does this happen? This happens because we know that across any material if we apply a temperature gradient there will be conduction of heat right because there is no perfect insulator heat will be conducted however low or however high it is. So, we are going to write conduction heat as Q cont is equal to what is it T H minus T C okay, times the thermal conductance what is that Q is K A d T d x. Okay. So, therefore, I will write it as K p where K is the thermal conductivity A p over L p plus K n A n over L n. These are thermal conductances just like these are electrical resistances. So, from our basic knowledge of heat conduction heat transfer we know that Q is L over K uh, sorry thermal Q is delta T times K times the cross sectional area divided by the thickness across which the heat is conducted in this case the length. Okay. So, again let me just quickly write down this, this junction is this is the length L. So, for n and p it will be uh, accordingly it will be the length of n and the length of p. So, this again sometimes later we may refer to as K clear. So, we have joule heat we have conduction heat there is a third one which is very important and which is actually uh, coming from the thermoelectric effect and that is the Peltier heat. Remember what was the Peltier effect? The Peltier effect stated or Pelt, sorry Peltier heat. The Peltier effect stated that over and above joule heat there is an additional amount of heat which we call the Peltier heat which must be removed or absorbed in order to keep the junctions isothermal. Okay. So, we are going to denote that as Q p Q Peltier and from Peltier effect what do we know of that? We know that that is going to be equal to pi p 2 n times the current that flows through it right and again this can be shown to be equal to alpha p n times 
i times t and this t can be t h or t c depending on the junction. Okay. So, with these definitions what we will do next is we will actually do the energy balance. So, let us go for the energy balance. The first starting with the hot junction. So, hot junction we can write the energy balance as Q H clear plus Q H is again remember it is the heat input. So, that is what is coming in what else is the input there we said that half of the joule heat is dissipated over there. So, q j half of q j and what is going out what is going out of the hot junction let me bring back the schematic. So, q h is an input q j is an input what is going out of here the conduction heat will be from the hot junction to the cold junction. So, I will write it as q conduction and what else this is a hot junction. So, therefore, the Peltier heat has to be constantly removed in order to keep it constant it in order to keep the temperature at th. So, q p. So, let us rearrange this I will go a little fast now here. So, this will be q, condu q conduction plus q Peltier minus half of q j and we can write it as alpha p n i t h plus T h minus T c times k minus half i squared r. Okay. Remember k and r we have already defined I am um, sorry I, I kind of swapped these two. So, this is actually q p and this is actually q conduction sorry this is actually q conduction this is actually q p. So, this is equal to this this is equal to this, but I, I hope you understand. Yeah. Okay. So, we have got an expression for the q h which is the heat input as a function of these different parameters. So, let me box that because we are going to use it um, later. So, this is going to be an important expression. Second one will be the cold junction. So, similarly in the cold junction what 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 can we do what is coming to the cold junction is q cond the conduction the heat that is conducted away from the hot junction is coming to the cold junction. So, that is an input again the Peltier effect Peltier heat has to come in because the heat has to be absorbed in order to maintain it at that temperature okay. plus half q j as before and what is going out is q c. All right. So, this again we can write it as q c will come out as alpha p n i t c plus t h minus t c times k plus half i squared r. Okay. If we do the mathematics we will get this. So, this is my other important expression. So, I have got an expression for the heat that is coming to the hot junction and the heat that is being dissipated at the cold junction in terms of various parameters in terms of temperatures in terms of the current that is flowing in terms of the material properties like the conductivity and resistivity as well as the Seebeck coefficient clear. So, therefore, what do I have to do I have to find out what is the amount of electrical energy or electrical work that I can get out of this thermoelectric module. Okay. And what is that going to be that is going to be the current times this resistance sorry I squared R that is current square times R L. So, let us write that down and say therefore, the electrical 
energy or work obtained is going to be V L times I this is a voltage across the load times I and what is that going to be Q H minus Q C first law of thermodynamics. Therefore, V L which is the voltage across the load times I if you now use both the expressions that we derived before it will beautifully come lot of things will cancel out and it will come out to be as alpha t times the temperature difference T H minus T C minus I squared R clear. So, therefore, sorry alpha p n times I times T H minus T C yeah. So, therefore, what is this? So, therefore, we can also write as V L which by the way is I times R L is equal to alpha times the temperature difference minus I because one of the currents cancel out and let me write it down as R p plus R n right. So, R p as we know we have defined before R p is rho p L p over A p and similarly R n is rho n L n over A n clear. So, therefore, what does this give? This gives I which is the current that is flowing through it is going to be alpha p n sorry T h minus T c I am sorry T h minus T c divided by R p plus R n plus the external resistance R l. So, what does the current flow depend on? This is an expression that nicely captures all the independent variables on which the current flow will depend on. It will depend on the material properties because the Seebeck coefficient alpha p n is a material property. It will depend on the temperature difference. So, higher the temperature difference higher is the current that we are going to get. It is also going to depend on the dimensions as well as the electrical resistances of the p and n junctions of the p and n materials right. So, the electrical resistances the material part comes from resistivity the geometric parts comes from the length and cross sectional area. And finally, last but not the least it is also going to depend on what is the external load that I am putting in clear. So, the current depends on all these parameters it depends again once again on the material properties in terms of Seebeck coefficient as well as the electrical resistivities of the p and n junctions. It depends on the geometrical properties and the geometric dimensions rather like the length and cross sectional area of the p and n junctions or the p and n elements I am sorry and finally, sorry it also depends on the temperature difference of course, very very important and finally, the external load. Yeah. So, next what we will do is we will continue our analysis and say how do we calculate the efficiency of a TEG ok. How do we calculate this? So, let us write that eta which is normally what is denoted or what is used to denote efficiency what will be the eta of TEG? The basic definition of efficiency is the work output which is W L divided by the energy input which is Q H clear ok. Here we will also write one more thing that eta Carnot for a for a thermoelectric device is going to be 1 minus T c over T h we know this right. So, this is going to be the Carnot efficiency. 
and the thermoelectric generator efficiency will be definitely much lower than this. But it at this point let us also keep this in mind and later on we are going to use it. Okay. So, what I am going to do next is this will be a mathematical exercise let m is equal to resistance ratio and defined as R L over R P plus R N. So, which is the external resistance divided by the thermal the intrinsic th electrical resistances of the thermoelectric elements. Okay. So, therefore, I can write I which is the current is going to be alpha P n T H minus T C divided by 1 plus m into R P plus R n. Okay. Therefore, the external work W L is going to be I squared R L and you can show it to be as alpha squared P n T H minus T C whole squared divided by 1 plus m squared R P plus R n squared times R L is what m times R P plus R n m times R P plus R n. Okay. So, a lot of things will cancel out and finally, what we will have is m divided by 1 plus m whole squared times alpha squared P T H minus T C whole squared this does not cancel unfortunately divided by R P plus R n. Okay. Clear. So, next what we will do is we will move on therefore, the efficiency of the thermoelectric generator is going to be W L over Q H which is going to be what we just found the expression for W L and divided by Q H for which we had derived a, an expression before. So, this is my expression for W L and this was my expression for Q H except that over here I am going to um, just use some of these m definitions. So, I will put r as r p plus r n and so on. Okay. If we do all that and I will leave it to you as an exercise you will finally, end up getting an expression in this manner T H minus T C over T H times and this will be a long expression the denominator the numerator is going to be simple it is just an m. The denominator will look something like this 1 plus m minus half T H minus T C over T H plus R times K which is again R p plus R n times K p plus K n divided by alpha square P n times 1 plus m whole squared divided by T h. Okay. This is how it will look. Now, let us spend some time looking at this expression T h minus T c over T h what was this? Okay. If you recall this is Carnot efficiency this times I have a factor which encompasses a lot of properties. It encompasses the temperature difference 
as well as the absolute temperature of the hot junction. It includes the material and geometric properties through the resistances and conductances and it also includes what is the external load and the resistance of that external load that we has that we have put through this term m clear. So, therefore, the efficiency depends on the material properties the materials that we are using it depends on the temperature difference as well as the absolute temperature and it also depends on the external load that we have put in ok. So, in order to get the maximum efficiency we need to try and optimize each of these ok. So, one last thing that we will do over here is this term is very important I will just circle this term ok. So, I am going to define this let define this by a term z or z ok. So, z is actually alpha squared p n ok divided by k p plus k n times r p plus r n ok. So, this is 1 over z actually. So, this becomes 1 over z. So, this is a very very important figure of merit. When we talk about thermoelectric if you go and tell anybody that I am working with thermoelectric the first thing that they will ask you is what is the z t value and the z typically the out of that z t is this parameter t of course, is the typically either the temperature of the hot junction or the mean temperature of the two ok. The z as you will see has dimensions of Kelvin to the power minus 1 that is why z t is important ok to make it non dimensionless and what does it depend it is a function of material properties and geometry and more importantly material properties because geometry you can tailor or you can use. So, therefore, what we will end this lecture is by this expression therefore, I would say the def the efficiency of a thermoelectric generator is given by the Carnot efficiency T h minus T c over T h times m divided by 1 plus m minus half T h minus T c over T h plus 1 plus m whole squared divided by z T h ok. One of the most important expressions in thermoelectric generators is this expression ok. So, as we see the efficiency depends on a variety of parameters that we just saw and here we have defined something very very important which is the figure of merit z ok having dimensions of 1 over Kelvin. So, today we started with doing some analysis and we are trying to and what we did was we came up with an expression, but by doing energy balance we came up with an expression for the efficiency of a thermoelectric generator as a function of its material properties as a function of its dimensions as well as a function of its circuit properties in the sense that what is the resistance of the load that I have put externally ok. So, in the next class we what we will do is we will complete this exercise and we will try to wrap up thermoelectric generators ok. So, again hopefully uh, you have learned something new today and we will continue with this learning in the next class. Thank you very much.